Hi guys, welcome back to our drone channel. As promised today, we are talking about this little device. It's a bit noisy. So if you are thinking about getting this little self-flying camera, then watch out this video. I'm gonna show you all details, all features and functions that you can expect from this little device. And by the end, you totally know if this fits right in your pocket. So we're gonna start right after the intro. So check this out. Just over a year ago, the Hover Air X1 hit the drone world like a meteor, turning everything upside down. A mini drone so compact that it fits in your pocket, flying fully autonomously with a 2.7K camera that was revolutionary. Now, the Hover Air team is back with the X1 Pro and X1 Pro Max. But is it really as amazing as they claim or just an overpriced DJI Neo? I mean, you're already paying around 500 bucks for the standard version, which isn't exactly cheap. I got my hands on the cycling combo and tested this thing thoroughly for the past two weeks. Spoiler alert, this video is going to be a bit longer because I don't want to leave anything out. So feel free to use the chapter marker to skip to the part you're most interested in, whether it's battery life, camera quality or flight performance. But enough talk, let's dive right in. Hover Air X1 Pro size and design. Just like its predecessor, the Hover Air X1 Pro is foldable, which makes it super convenient for travel. It barely takes up any space. To give you some numbers, it's 173 by 149 by 39 millimeters when unfolded and just 105 by 149 by 34 millimeters when folded. For comparison, my Samsung Galaxy S23 is 155 by 75 by 8 millimeters. So this drone can easily fit into a jacket or even a loose pants pocket. Weight-wise, it's also really light, coming in at just 191.5 grams or 192.5 grams for the Pro Max version. That one gram difference is just the cameras on the Pro Max being a tiny bit heavier. Now, let's take a closer look at the drone itself. Quick heads up, this is my personal drone, so it's a bit beat up. I've been testing it pretty hard for the past weeks, which involved a few crashes here and there. But don't worry, the X1 Pro Max took it all like a champ. The drone has four small propellers, which are tucked into a wing-like cage on both sides of the main body. If you look closely, you'll see a bunch of tiny screws around the propellers and the cage. Standard T4 torque screws, by the way. So, if you ever need to swap the props, just be ready to unscrew a bunch. The prop guard is made from something called HEM, high elastic material, which is super flexible and though I haven't tried breaking it on purpose, but even during those rough crashes, it held up really well. And the coolest part, the prop guard folds up easily and the two halves snap together with magnets. In the middle you've got the main body where all the tech is, like the obstacle sensors, the camera and the memory slots. Obstacle detection. This is done in the rear area of the Pro Max via the camera and a proximity sensor, while the Pro version only has a proximity sensor. Since the drone often flies backwards, this is a smart addition to avoid crashes. For forward flying though, it's just the visual camera doing the work. There are no extra sensors. In the standard follow mode, the detection works okay, but it sometimes struggles, especially with thin branches, which it just doesn't pick up. Remember, never rely solely on the obstacle detection system. As the pilot, you are still responsible for avoiding any crashes. So, if you flip the drone over, you'll find downward sensors that help with low altitude flying and landing. Overall, the system works decently. Well, let me know in the comments what you think about obstacle detection in drones in general. Do you use it or do you usually turn it off like me? Storage and ports. On the left rear side, we now find a USB-C port and a micro SD card slot. The USB-C port is used to charge the drone and to transfer data. 
The X1 Pro and Pro Max versions do have internal memory, but this can now be expanded by a maximum of one terabyte. This is a useful feature when recording with a resolution of up to 8K, as one minute of film can take up 2 GB. The internal memory of the Pro version is 32 GB and that of the Pro Max is 64 GB. I don't use a micro SD card myself, by the way, as I can manage perfectly well with the internal memory of the Pro Max. However, if you are planning to use a micro SD card, I recommend using a fast model. At least Ultra cards from SanDisk should be a good choice here. You can find these in my Amazon shop among other places. The link is, as you know, in the description. Batteries. Up top there is the battery compartment. The battery pops in and out easily with contacts at the back. That being said, I think the battery could fit a little tighter. It doesn't take much force to pull it out and during a few of my crashes the battery actually fell out, which isn't ideal. The battery itself is a 1920mAh smart battery, giving you around 15 minutes of flight time, depending on weather and speed. Each battery weighs around 63 grams, so is also super light. Display and controls. In front of the battery there is a 0.8 inch black and white display that shows battery life, current flight mode and settings. A very helpful feature, but of course it requires extra energy compared to its predecessor. The display itself is sharp enough that even people with bad eyesight should be able to read it easily. Below the display are three buttons. A big round power button and two smaller select buttons on either side. If the drone's off and you press the power button briefly, it'll show the battery life. Hold it down and it'll boot up the X1 Pro. If the drone is already on, a quick press will start the currently selected flight mode, while a long press will shut it off. The select buttons are used to switch between flight modes. Hold one down and you can tweak the settings like altitude, rotations, focus and others for the selected flight mode. If you press both select buttons together, the LED at the front turns blue, putting the drone into connection mode, ready to pair with the app or the beacon. More on the app in a later chapter, but more on the beacon in another video. Camera and gimbal. Now onto the heart of the drone, the camera. This is where the Pro and Pro Max really differ. Both models have a 1 1.3 inch CMOS sensor with a 16 mm wide angle lens, but the Pro Max delivers much higher output. While the X1 Pro shoots with up to 4K resolution, the X1 Pro Max can take up to 8K. There are also big differences in the frame rate. The Pro reaches 120 frames per second, but only at a resolution of 1080p, while the Pro Max delivers razor sharp 4K recordings at 120 frames per second. Plus, the Pro Max supports 10 bit HLG HDR for much better color quality which the Pro doesn't have. Well, for photos, the Pro is capped at 12 megapixel, while the Pro Max can go all the way up to 48 megapixel. This also reduces the field of view of the Pro from 107 to 104 degrees compared to the Pro Max. The camera itself is stabilized by a two-axis gimbal. In both cases, this is supported by software-based video stabilization called Smooth Capture 2.0. We'll talk about the image quality that comes out in the end in another chapter. Legal stuff. So when it comes to the law, the X1 Pro and Pro Max fall under the European Z0 drone category, which is marked on the drone itself. This is actually a big deal because it means you can fly it in the A1, A3 categories in Europe. In other words, you don't need any kind of drone license. Plus, you're allowed to fly the X1 Pro and Pro Max up to 120 meters high at speeds up to 65 kilometers per hour and even near buildings. But you certainly won't fly it at that altitude. However, in most European countries, you still need to register as a drone operator and get liability insurance. If you are in the US, no need to register it with the FAA unless you're using it for commercial purposes. Well, but enough of this legal stuff. Accessories. 
Let's take a closer look at what you actually get when you grab the basic combo for the drone. If you've already watched my unboxing video, which I'll link for you in the corner, feel free to skip ahead a bit. For the rest of you, we're about to dive into the box and check out everything inside. The pouch. So for everyone who is tight on space in the back or loves being organized, this little VLOR pouch is your best friend. The X1 Pro or the Pro Max fit perfectly in it and there is even room for one or two spare batteries. The velvety material looks high quality and is resistant to minor influences such as dust or scratches. In terms of tear resistance, the bag makes a solid impression. It can withstand a lot and protects the drone from minor impacts. Cable. So the scope of the delivery also includes a 50 cm long USB-C to USB-C cable. It is preliminary intended for data transfer, be it with a laptop or a smartphone and ensures that your videos and images are transferred quickly. The cable is of high quality and robustly made perfect for everyday use. If you don't use an SD card like I do, this cable is ideal for assessing the drone internal memory directly. Combo case. The hard case that comes with the drone is a real relief when it comes to storing all the accessories safely and neatly. The dimensions are 260 by 180 by 60 millimeters, which means that it fits comfortably in any backpack and still has enough space to hold the drone, batteries, charger and even some smaller accessories. The inside is designed that the drone and accessories sit firmly and don't slide around, which offers additional protection. The extra compartment in the lid of the case is particularly clever. Here you can store instructions, cables or other flat objects without them flying around in the case itself. The material on the outside is water repellent and therefore protects the drone not only from impacts but also from moisture and indispensable accessory for outdoor adventures. Charging hub. One of the most useful accessories is a two-way charger which allows you to charge two batteries at the same time. The compact charging station measures just 110 by 70 by 30 millimeters and therefore fits easily in any bag. The central button on a charging station is particularly helpful as you can use it to read the charge level of the batteries. Four small LEDs show you exactly how far the charging process has progressed. A single battery is fully charged in just 45 minutes while both batteries can be charged simultaneously within 16 minutes. Battery. The additional battery has the same specifications as the one already included. 1920 mAh capacity, a weight of 63 grams and a voltage of 7.38 volt. Particularly noteworthy is the safety function, which prevents overcharging or deep discharge and thus significantly extend the life of the battery. Self-discharge protection is also integrated, which protects the battery during longer storage periods. The battery shows its strength, especially in colder environment. It works reliably even in frost, making it an ideal companion for winter trips. Power adapter. Last but not least, another important accessory is the 65 watt power adapter. This is specially designed to supply the charging hub with power quickly and efficiently. With its USB-C power slot and support for PD fast charging, it ensures that your batteries are ready for use again in no time. Flight modes. Now that we've looked at the drone from the outside, it's time to dive into how it actually works. The Hover X1 Pro was designed to fly autonomously and make things as simple as possible for the user. To launch it, just place the drone on your palm and press the power button. It'll take off and be ready to explore the different flight modes. So what modes does the drone offer? Hover. The hover mode is the default for the X1 Pro. In this mode, the drone stays put in the air, not moving at all. Perfect for steady shots or when you just want to keep it in place while you plan your next move. You can also enable automatic tracking, meaning the drone will stay in one spot but turn to face you wherever you go. Super handy for outdoor interviews or when you want to be the focus without constantly adjusting the drone's position. Zoom out. The zoom out mode 
similar to the DJI's Drone Knee, makes the drone move backwards while keeping you in the center of the shot. You can choose how far back it flies and whether it should gain altitude. This creates a dynamic cinematic shot that shows more of your surroundings as the drone zooms out. But just be careful, since the drone moves backward and even it has backward obstacle detection, always double check that there aren't any obstacles behind it before you start. Follow. Follow mode is one of the coolest features of the Hover Air X1 Pro. The drone follows you from behind whether you're walking, running or even biking. It also dodges obstacles, though not perfectly but still a great choice for outdoor action shots. You can adjust how high or how far behind it follows. In my tests, keeping the drone a bit higher worked best. It's great for dynamic shots and with the right setting you get smooth professional looking footage. Orbit. In orbit mode the drone flies in a circle around you while keeping you in the center. It's a perfect for dramatic 360 shots that immerse the viewer. But watch out! Since the X1 Pro doesn't have any side sensors, it won't detect obstacles like trees or buildings in its path. Before you hit go, so make sure the area is clear. You can also tweak the orbit's radius, direction or the number of rotations, plus adjust the height for extra flare. Bird's eye. Bird's eye mode is all about getting that top-down overhead shot. The drone rises straight up and films the scene below. This angle gives a unique view especially useful for capturing big landscapes or even symmetrical structures. The bonus? Since the drone's going straight up, you don't need to worry much about side obstacles. You can also set the maximum height and decide whether it should rotate during the ascent for added movement in your shot. Dolly Track Dolly Track mode might seem a bit tricky at first, but it's actually a pretty cool feature. The drone stays in front of you and films you from the front, whether you're walking, biking or running. It works great for creating a dynamic shot, but be careful. Since the drone flies backward, it doesn't always avoid obstacles. It's also not as stable as follow mode and sometimes it can drift off to the side. In my case, it led to some crashes. But for getting awesome front-facing footage, it's still worth a try. Sidetrack. Just like it sounds, sidetrack mode has the drone flying next to you trying to keep a profile shot. Again, since the X1 Pro doesn't have side sensors, uh, guess what? Right, you want to make sure there is nothing in its way as it won't detect obstacles. This mode works surprisingly well even at faster speeds and is great for offering a unique perspective compared to your usual front or follow shots. Manual mode. In manual mode you get full control over the drone. You need to use the app to fly it manually. Unlike the autonomous modes you're in charge of moving the drone wherever you want. This is perfect for more complex flight maneuvers that the automated modes can't handle. You control it with virtual joysticks on your phone. One stick controls height and rotation, while the other controls horizontal movement. The drone connects via Wi-Fi, so how far you can fly it depends on the strength of your phone's signal. For experienced pilots, this mode opens up all sorts of creative possibilities. Well, in manual mode there are numerous setting options, which we will look at in one of the next chapters, image quality. In this section we're gonna look quickly at the image quality of the Hover X1 Pro Pro Max, especially the video recording, since that's probably the main thing most users care about. So when it comes to the specs, the X1 Pro Pro Max is definitely at the top of the game for drone cameras. During my test the drone delivered some seriously impressive videos in good lightning. The 4K resolution makes sure the details are sharp and clear and at 60 frames per second the motion stays smooth which is great for action packed scenes. But if you go for the 8K resolution keep in mind that the frame rate drops to 30 frames per second. Well that's fine for calmer scenes but it can get a bit choppy with fast movements. As for colors, they usually look pretty natural and not too over the top. The color balance is well-tuned, making scenes vibrant but not fake. 
The detail in the footage is especially excellent in 4K, particularly in close-ups or when you're really pushing the sensor to its limits. While the drone does a great job in normal lightning, I noticed a drop in quality in darker environments during my tests. The one 1.3 inch sensor is bigger than many competitors, but in low light, you can see noise and weaker dynamics. This means that details in the shadows can get lost and the overall image loses some sharpness. If you plan to shoot a lot at dusk or at night, you should keep this in mind. Another thing I notice in my tests is the wide angle distortion. With a 107 degree field of view, the camera gives you a really wide perspective, which is awesome for landscape and broad scenes. However, there's noticeable distortion at the edges of the image, called fish eye distortion. This can lead to unwanted effects in scenes with straight lines like buildings or roads. It's not a big deal breaker, but definitely something to consider when planning your shots. So drop me a comment what you think. Does this effect bother you or do you think it's cool? Also the sensor performance in bright light, despite the impressive 8K video resolution, isn't always perfect. Sometimes highlights can get blown out, which limits the dynamic range. Basically, you've got two options to tackle this problem in high contrast scenes. One, the drone has an HDR mode that really boosts the quality of the shots. Or two, you can use ND filters. These are part of the special accessories you can buy from the Hover Air website. Well, I'll deep dive into the ND filters in another video. Finally, there's one really impressive feature to mention. The drone has a two-axis gimbal and smooth capture image stabilization, which keeps the footage super steady. It usually does a great job even when it's windy. I've noticed from time to time a little bit of jitter or horizon tilt during fast moving scenes or windy gusts, but overall the recording have been mainly awesome. So great job at all. Even though it's a self-flying, fully autonomous drone, you still need an app. First the drone has to be activated and for that you need the Hover X1 app on your phone, but that's not a big deal since the app gives you tons of options to customize settings for different flight modes and tailor the experience to what you're looking to capture. It's really user friendly, letting you control things like altitude, uh, speed and flight patterns with just a few taps. The app also makes it easy to download footage right from the drone so you can quickly access your shots and if you're into adding some flair, the app has built-in editing tools with various effects and filters to make your videos look even better before sharing them. I'll walk you through how it all works so you can get the most out of every flight. So let's go! When we open the app, we land on the home screen where we can check out photos and videos from other users, but we're not really here for that. So we jump straight to the hover section with two main options. So let's start with hover. The menu always follows the same structure. At the top we have the flight settings, which are the settings you can also see on the drone's display and vary from mode to mode. At the bottom you'll find the camera settings, which are mostly the same across modes. Well, so for hover there are not many options. We can either set if it should record us all the time or just 30 seconds and whether we want the drone to keep us always in focus. So we've got the shooting mode set to video here. You can also switch to HDR or slow-mo if you know you'll be filming in Tricky Lightning, it's best to switch to HDR. Or if you want epic slow motion shots, guess what, you've got slow-mo mode here. Just keep in mind that slow-mo files get big fast, so plan on them being about three times the size of regular videos. The vertical mode toggle is pretty self-explanatory. If you turn it on, the drone records in portrait mode, but keep in mind, this is just a software crop since the camera doesn't actually rotate like it does on the DJI Mini 4 Pro, for example. So with vertical mode, you lose the option to zoom, which is only available in horizontal recordings. Under resolution and frame rate, you'll see different options depending on the mode. I honestly don't know why that is. I expected every mode would go up to 8K and 120 frames per second, but uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Lastly, there's the video encoding, which I keep set to H.264. By default, I don't see the point of using more processing power to play videos when there's no real boost in quality. Zoom out. Here we've got a few more flight modes. First we can set how far the X1 Pro should fly out and choose whether the drone should move in a flat or ascending path. You just have to test out which one you prefer. Below that, 
you can choose whether the drone should keep you in focus while it moves. The last flight setting is super interesting and important, backward obstacle detection. As I mentioned when introducing this mode, I think this is really crucial. Without it, the drone might back into obstacles or objects, so I recommend keeping this option on. At the bottom on the camera settings, you will see the same option as in hover. However, there is an added setting called video segments. If you turn this on, the drone splits your recording into two videos. One capturing the flight away from you until it reaches the farthest point and then a second video starts recording as the drone flies back toward you. I personally prefer having just one continuous video that includes both the outbound and return flight. Follow. In follow mode, we have three main settings in the app. First is duration, which controls how long the drone will follow and record you. I keep this on continuous so I can decide myself when to stop recording. Next up is distance. Here you can set whether the drone follows you closely at a medium distance or farther away. I found that the medium distance works best for me. Then there is altitude. This lets you set whether the X1 Pro should follow at eye level, slightly above or around waist height. I prefer it slightly above, so I'm not blocking as much of the shot. For the video settings, it's all pretty much the same as before, with one small change on the resolution frame rate. For some reason, I don't know why, Hover Air doesn't offer a 2.7K option here, but 4K is available at up to 60 frames per second. Personally, I like to shoot at 60 frames per second because it gives me the option to add slow motion later in editing at half of the original speed. Orbit. The flight settings in orbit mode are a bit more detailed. First, you can set the radius. It ranges from a tight 1.5 meters up to 10 meters. Under angle, you'll find rotation options. You can go for one, two, or three full rotations. You can also pick partial rotations of 180 or 90 degrees. Altitude is here again like in other modes, letting you set the height. Lows around waist level, highs above head level and flat shot is eye level. If you turn off target tracking, the X1 Pro keeps its focus on the center of the entire orbit. If your tracking is on, the drone also rotates during the orbit to keep you in focus the whole time. Finally, orbit directions let you choose the direction of the orbit. In the camera settings, there's nothing new, just options for vertical mode, slow mo, or HDR. Max resolution here is 4K at 60 frames per second. Bird's eye. In bird's eye mode, settings are pretty simple. While ascending, you can have the drone rotate for a dynamic shot, choosing between slow, normal, or fast rotation. Altitude sets the max height from 5 to 15 meters. The camera settings here are a bit more interesting. Like in other modes, you can split the recording into two segments, but I'm not a huge fan of that, so I usually turn it off. In duration overhead, you can decide how long the X1 Pro stays at max altitude before descending. Try out a few durations to see what you like best. Shooting angle is a cool feature here. By default, the camera points down in bird's eye mode, but you can switch it to flat. So it films straight ahead while going up and down. Paired with rotation, this can create some pretty interesting shots. The other settings are pretty much the same as in the other modes, but here 8K is available as long as vertical mode is off. Max resolution is 8K at 30 frames per second, which definitely gives a step up in quality over 4K, though it'll also eat up more storage. Dolly track. In dolly track mode, the flight settings will look pretty familiar. Duration lets you decide if the drone should film continuously or automatically stop after 30 seconds. Under distance, you can choose whether the drone follows close, at a medium distance or further away. Personally, I think medium gives the best results. With altitude, again, you set the levitation height, above head level, eye level or around waist level. I prefer the flat shot at eye level. Also, since dolly track usually means the drone's moving backward, I recommend turning on the rear sensors for obstacle detection. The camera settings are pretty standard, with max resolution at 8K and 30 frames per second, or 4K at 60 frames per second. Sidetrack. Sidetrack mode has the same settings as dolly track. Again, you can set whether you want a short 30 seconds clip or continuous recording. Distance sets how close or far the drone will follow, and I still recommend the medium distance. Altitude, as usual, lets you choose the height. For sidetrack, I think the high setting works nicely to capture a lower perspective in the shot. The camera settings are the same, with no special options here. And the filters. One of the best upgrades from the last model in the range of accessories. Now we even get ND filters for the X1 Pro and X1 Pro Max. Setting them up couldn't be easier. Just loosen the lens cover, slide on the ND filter, et voila.
Once you've got the filter in place, remember to enable it in the app. Since the camera usually runs on auto, the software would automatically adjust the ISO levels. Enabling the filter setting prevents that, so the drone knows which filter is in front of the lens. Now you are all set to capture motion blur with the X1 Pro and X1 Pro Max. Sound recording. This is something we've already seen on the X1. Drones are loud, so recording quickly becomes unusable. That's why Hover Air includes a noise reduction feature. You can choose either standard or extreme reduction. Both works decently well, though the audio does sound a bit flat afterwards. Well, your Hover Air X1 Pro and X1 Pro Max is also able to record videos with audio. Well, the audio is recorded via your phone, so you should therefore keep your phone close to your mouth. I have chosen right now the normal noise reduction um, and the app is saying it is eliminating all the propeller sounds and just keep the environment sounds and the sound of my voice. To have a good comparison, I have switched on my regular camera with, your, with my uh, microphone. So let's see how good this noise reduction is really working. Now I'm going to do a test with the extreme noise reduction. Okay, and then there is the extreme noise reduction. Um, so normally you should now hear a dog barking in the background. Um, so let's see if this is also available on the sound of the drones. Yes, normally it shouldn't. Because it's part of the environment and env environment sounds shall be eliminated. And only my voice sound should be available. Secondary settings. There are a few extra settings here, but they don't need much attention. Firmware update checks for latest software, storage management shows how much space is used or free, and hover language, uh, yep, you guessed it, sets the language with options for English and Chinese. Unit of length let you pick between meters or inches. Flight modes. In the bottom menu, you'll find flight modes. Not much to explain here. It's a tutorial or help mode. Short. Fun animations show how each mode works and the best way to use it. Super useful for beginners, it even shows the difficulty levels of each mode and how many times you've used them. Basic modes are marked in blue, advanced modes in purple and most advanced modes in gold. If you're new, this is perfect section to help you get to know your X1 Pro. Me. The last section in the menu is Me with a few cool features. You can see all registered hover air drones and connect to any of them directly if needed. If you're uploading photos or videos to hover air social cloud, you'll find your history under the time machine. Tutorials offer some flight tips while help and feedback is where you can contact support if your drone's damaged. Usually you'll get a response within a few hours with instructions on what to do next. The most interesting feature here is check restricted flight areas. When you select it, you'll get a map with no fly zones, but be warned, the map's not exactly user-friendly. There's almost no interface, so you just zoom around and wait for data to load. It's pretty basic and most countries have better solutions from their aviation authorities. Still, it gives you a rough idea of where to avoid flying. Let's head back to manual mode. The last and most customizable mode is manual mode. Like I mentioned earlier, you can fly the X1 Pro and Pro Max fully manual in this mode. Sure, the X1 Pro and Pro Max will never be quite like a DJI Mini 4 Pro, but this mode brings a whole lot of flying fun. Let's go through the different settings here. Start by tapping the little gear icon in the top right corner of the screen. You see three main options in the menu. First up, flight settings. On the control method, you can choose between joystick or button controls. The difference here is the smoothness. Buttons only do set movements, but joystick allows for gradual blended movements. Control directions let you invert the joystick controls. Forward, backward and left, right get swapped depending on what you choose. I recommend flying with two wards outside to keep from getting disoriented. The camera settings here are extensive, covering all the options available on the drone. Shooting mode lets you choose normal shots, HDR for tricky lightning or slow motion. The X1 Pro has a 2x digital zoom, which you can enable or disable in the next option. For resolution, you get almost all the options, from 1080p to 4K and the X1 Pro's big draw, 8K. 
But be careful, frame rate changes depending on what you pick and vice versa. For example, if you choose 120 frames per second, 8K isn't available. For standard recordings, I recommend 4K at 60 frames per second or 8K at 24 frames per second. Then we've got video encoding, where you can pick H.264 or H.265. For easier playback on most devices, I'd stick with H.264. One more option down is the image grid. You can go with a 3x3 grid, a gold ratio grid to help with compositions, or a cross grid with diagonal lines and a center point. Personally, I like the 3x3 grid, though since the gimbal stabilizes horizontally, you might not even need a grid. Finally, there's a countdown option. When tapping the record button, the X-ROM Pro counts down from 3 seconds before starting, which I find pretty handy, so I always keep it on. Next up, we have joystick settings. The term is a bit misleading since it includes some crucial options. First off is what the x one Pro should do if it loses connection with the controller. By default, it's set to hover, which is totally impractical. Imagine you're flying manual going up to 10 meters and you lose connection. Then what? It just hovers there and you have to wait for the battery to drain to get it back. That's why I recommend switching this setting to return, so it automatically flies back to the starting point if the connection cuts out. RTH height stands for return to home altitude. If the drone returns automatically to the starting point, this value lets you set the height it'll use. Keep in mind that it won't avoid obstacles on its way back, so I suggest setting the RTH height to 20 to 30 meters to clear most houses and trees. Below that, there are four sliders. The first two, horizontal speed and vertical speed, control how fast your X1 Pro Pro Max moves. A good speed for horizontal movement is around 4 to 6 meters per second and for vertical ascent between 1.5 and 2 meters per second. To convert from meters per sec to kilometers per hour, just multiply by 3.6. Then there's rotation speed, how fast the X1 Pro spins and pitch speed, how quickly the camera tilts up or down. That's it for the settings section. In the top left corner you'll see a few values you can also adjust. EV, exposure value, which controls image brightness, ISO, sensor sensitivity and S for shutter speed. You can adjust these manually to optimize the camera performance, which is especially useful if you're using, for example, ND filters. But if you're just starting out, I'd recommend keeping everything on default. ISO and shutter on auto and EV at 0.0. .0. Alright folks, unfortunately we have come to an end and I hope I was able to give you a clear and good overview about all the features and functions that you can expect from your new Hover Air X1 Pro and X1 Pro Max. If you have further questions just drop me a comment below. If you're happy with the video then smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For the next video, you know I have got myself the full cycling combo, which includes additional accessories like the beacon, like a handlebar mount, like a bike bag and like this cool power station. Okay, I'm going to show you all of these additional accessories in my next upcoming video. I'm going to do an extensive review and show you all the functions that you can expect from these additional accessories. So if you are curious then stay tuned and watch out my next video. Until then have a good day, see you, bye bye!